for the people who uh, are not able to make it. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys and share my what I like to call the 15 point plan. All right. And the 15 point plan. Uh, the 15 point plan uh, basically details everything we do from the moment we get there to the moment that we are out. Um, and if you follow this guide, it it, it will lay out uh, by time specifically what we are doing. And like I said, traditionally we do this full day, so it's going to be a lot better, uh, a lot easier per se. You know, it's, it's a great uh, first step into the door of what is camp with us. All right, so the 15 point plan for the for camp um uh basically basically states that we eat the biggest frog first. So what does that mean? Uh usually, usually uh people want to do the easiest task first. You know, for example, um maybe the cones first. Yes, but in this 15 point plan, we want to knock out the heaviest things first so that it gradually uh goes down and then we can we can um we can get through the day so at 8 a.m uh we're going to have about five counselors we usually always have counselors they're the ones who take the kids to the uh to the bathroom they're the ones who refill the kids water they're the ones who run to the building for you so that you don't have to leave your field um they're the ones that in your case juliana they're the ones who uh escort the kids that you need escorted to their group or to me so I can help them or whatnot. So we're going to have about five counselors. And it was very hard to find counselors this time around just because they're not used to the Thanksgiving break uh, um, and they weren't really ready for it. So at 8 a.m., the counselors, the coaches, and our administrators arrive. Um, and the first thing we do is we set up the registration tent where the parents and families are going to gather and, and, um, and sign in. Every kid has to sign in. Every kid has to sign out. All right. So the first thing we do is our registration table and our tent setup. Uh, and that consists of a, the, the AYSO tent, a table, and two to three chairs. Uh, once we do that, we jump onto the field and we we, we set up the field. Uh, we split field two into eight separate fields. Um, I don't predict we're going to have 100 kids. Um I more or less think we're going to be between 40 and 50. Um, so we are going to use plenty of the field, depending on how many kids we have, that's how many fields we'll use, but we always set up eight just in case. Um, and the biggest task when setting up the fields are the goals. Um, and uh, on Monday, that's going to be a priority as quick as possible. Usually on Tuesday, uh, they're still there because people don't move all the goals out. They usually use field one. Uh, and then three uh, on Wednesday, um, most of the goals are still in their place. So we're not going to do so much goal movement all three days unless a uh, 11 v 11 game happens that they have to move all the goals off the field. We have to redo it in the morning after we set up the goals. Then we go ahead and mark the fields with cones. Um, and I have a picture of the field set up uh, in a second right here that I'll show you guys. Here it is. Look, so uh, here's field two and field two split into uh, eight different fields. And we try to keep it by age, um, but the defining factor is by skill. And I'll let you guys know a little bit more about that. All right. So after we set up the cones, uh, we go ahead and do the bibs. And Juliana, while we're, while we're setting up the field, while we're setting up the goals, the cones, and we're getting the bibs, everything for the field, you'll be dealing with registration. You'll be dealing with people coming up and asking questions. You'll be dealing with um, um, uh, parent involvement. Uh, usually I, tr I, I give you the, the quote unquote best counselor that we have, the most, the oldest, most mature one so that they can help you so that they can uh, keep it moving. And um, when we get to the, when, when we get to the end, I would like to talk about registration a bit because um, I think Karina said we were going to have a QPR code so the parents can arrive, scan it, register on play metrics. And that's it because we're not doing any paper or uh, not even registration on site with our, with our uh, square, which, which is what we used to do. Um, but back to this, back to field setup. So the bibs for groups one and two, uh, uh, we hang them on the goals and for the rest of for the rest of the players. 
Uh, we usually have a big, huge whiteboard with all the campers' names and their groups so that they can go to it on Tuesday if they forget. But uh, that got damaged throughout the three years that we've been using it, and we haven't been able to get a new one. So that's on the list of purchase. So we don't have that, but we will have that on paper. Um, and then <clears throat> and then just have everything for uh, for your exercise setup for all the coaches. Make sure you uh, you know your exercise. I'm going to send you the exercise. Actually, uh, I can do that right now after the meeting. I'll send you the exercises. You guys know what we'll do Monday, what we'll do Tuesday, what we'll do Wednesday. Have the cones, have the equipment, have whatever you need for those activities. Like I spoke to Noah, I believe. Um, those 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 uh, training sessions per day um, are there for you to use unless you have something that you think is going to be one better, more educational, and the kids are going to have a lot more fun with. So if 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 we're doing shooting and the exercise uh, in shooting is is exercise A, but you have a really great shooting exercise, you can override it and you can do yours and see how it goes. Um, we have that liberty. Um, but it, but again, it has to carry those three factors. It has to be fun. It has to be educational, and the kids have to feel like they've learned something. Um, and um, and also a, a small task that we do for all the coaches, all the counselors, and um, and uh, Juliana, you as well, is we try to take two small videos and three pictures of camp, um, uh, so that we have content, so that we can we can share with the family, so that we can give updates, so that we can put it on Instagram, and if we have five counselors plus five uh, coaches and administrator. That's 10 times three, that's 30 pictures and or 10 videos that we will have of the camp for that one day. So in three days, we'll have 90, 90 pictures if we all just submit five total submissions of videos and pictures. So that's one thing that we do per coach, per administrator, so that we can have content. And lastly, greet as many campers as possible. Um, I, I personally take take uh pride in trying to know every kid's name um um so uh go far and beyond and, and and challenge yourself to get to know your kids names in those three days and that one day and that two days um and not only your group but as many as possible and most of these kids are from our group so you will know most of them so that is 8 a.m that is 8 a.m arrival that is registration table setup that is field setup, that is uh, our exercise setup, and that is our video submissions and pictures. From 9 a.m. to 9.30, that's when our official morning pickup game happens. There's kids that arrive at 8 because early arrival is 8 a.m. So if they arrive at 8, they shoot around with their with their players. Um, they shoot around with their players. Sorry, uh, no, let's try to get it. Uh, they shoot around with their players with their teammates uh the coaches give them some things to do if you're not set up then just let them be um let them wake up let them suggest that they stretch as soon as you have a um as soon as you have six players play a 3v3 with cones so uh but at 9 a.m to 9 30 a.m our official morning pickup game happens and juliana during this time is going to be your busiest time because most kids arrive between uh um uh eight 50 and 9 15 so around this time is going to be your busiest time um this is where we'll have the most arrivals um by 9 a.m we should be done with everything on slide one uh, all our setup from eight to nine that's one hour um and if we finish fast by 8 30 then we have 30 minutes for us to stretch ourselves grab our breakfast you know for those of you who drink coffee have your coffee or whatnot but um but we we want to have everything on slide one done by 9 a.m. Uh, um, ask camp starts. Help the kids get to their groups. Start by asking, hey, what's your name and how old are you? And if, depending on their age, more or less, use this guide here that I am hovering over um, to send them to their age groups. All right. Ages five to eight in these two age groups, seven to nine, eight to 10, nine to 11, 10 to 12, 11 through 14. And uh, over here is our oldest kids. All right. So more or less just send them to their groups. All right. Because we ourselves don't know which group they're going to end up. So we have to get them into their age groups 
so that then we can say, oh, he's below, even though this is his age group, he's below his age group. So we send them down a field. Um, and if you guys look at the, my, uh, my mouse here, it, this is um, this is field one, field two, and it goes by age three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. Um, and ask him immediately. Do you do do some context clues questions? Are you new to soccer? If they say I'm nine, but I'm completely new to soccer, then maybe you don't send them to field five, ages nine to eleven. That's the most advanced nine. Maybe you send them here to field three. And if they say, yeah, I've been playing my whole life and I'm and I'm 10, maybe send them to field five and see if he can jump up. So we want to more or less put them in their age group. And then the determining factor is their skill level. All right. Um, so the closer to field eight, which is uh, this one here, the closer to field eight, you send them the higher the level of play and the higher level of physicality. So even though there's a great player. Um, but he's he's he he hasn't reached that uh, um, uh, development stage of 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 growing. Um, also, think about protecting him and his well being. You don't want him to get hurt. Uh, so the morning pickup game, get involved, be a referee, celebrate their goals, encourage encourage your team to to participate, be a part of the experience. We remember this is an experience, and what the kids are going to remember is how we made them feel. So if they go home feeling happy, they're going to want to come back again. All right. So um, make sure you guys do that in the morning pickup game. Uh, in the morning pickup game, I prefer not to use any bibs. I prefer for it to be a little bit of street. I prefer for it to be a little bit of a wake up call um, uh, for them to use context clues. If he's shooting on my goal, he's not on my team. Uh, those asking for the ball and scoring that way are on my team. So it's a it's a little a uh, little uh, pickup for their brain. Um, it, it, it helps them with their memory, their awareness, and just overall common sense, you know, of not wearing bibs and just having to know who's on your team. Um, and again, back to the counselor name challenge um, and coaches challenge, learn names of the campers in your group minimum. Uh, that's going to be 10 kids, I predict. So if you can know your kids' names as soon as possible, that would be great. Um, and then for our counselors, we always have a little prize for those who can name as many campers as possible. Uh, at 9.30 a.m., that's where you bring them in. We call this Coach's Chalk Talk. So you guys bring them in. Um, hopefully, you've come with something you want to talk about that you might inspire someone, awaken and guide and be impactful uh, um, uh, to them. I usually come in with a quote. I usually come in with an experience. Uh, something that I think is going to motivate them. Uh, so that's at 9.30. Um, uh, have have three topics, in this case, three topics, one for every for every day, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so that when you, when you have this chalk talk, you have content. Talk to them about your rules and procedures, what your expectations are, how the culture of your group is going to be, um, and how it relates to the camp. Um, and whoever counselor that you guys have with you, introduce them. Make sure the players know that if they need water refills, they go to that counselor. If they need to go to that bathroom, they go to that counselor. Of course, tell you first, but that counselor is going to be doing that. And welcome campers every day that they come into camp. Any extra time, uh, um, um, any extra time that you have after your chalk talk, you can use uh, for them to just move around, stretch, or whatnot. Um, and one suggestion for bathroom break and water break, uh, do an all call every 45 minutes to an hour. So that be, if not, you're going to have kids every five minutes. I need to go to the bathroom and then that one comes back. So your counselor is just going to be running back and forth and it's not going to be enjoyable for anyone and for you as well as the coach getting disrupted. So every 45 minutes, anyone needs to go to the bathroom. Because next call is in 45 minutes. Or or does anyone need a water refill? Because the next call is in 45 minutes. So the counselor does one uh, run every 45 minutes and not 20 every uh, within 45 minutes. So these are just small things that help camp move along. By 9.40 a.m., which is a 10-minute window for your chalk talk, you should be going into your technical warm-up based on the technique of the day. On Monday, we'll work on dribbling. On Tuesday, we'll work on... Um, on uh, passing and on Wednesday, we'll work on shooting. All right, we've customized this three day week in that order. Uh, counselors, um, 
make sure they listen to you during the warm up because they're your assistant coach in the warm up. Um, again, I predict not a lot of we won't get an influx of kids, but you never know. And if that happens, your counselor is your assistant coach and it's very valuable. So make sure they listen to the instructions you're giving. Um, find any player that's struggling in the warm up and help. It's very visible when they're struggling. Uh, help monitor activities and notice where the breakdowns are or, or if you need to provide help somewhere. All right, find some time to stretch. And again, make sure you guys go to the bathroom and water break every 45 minutes and not every time. Okay, that's the warm up. By So the warm up's from 9.40 to 10. By, by 10, you should be going into your activity one. Again, you have the technique of the day, make it fun, add conditions, change it based on your experience and findings. And if you think you have something better to add or you have more fun doing something else and still learn, do it by all means. Um, make sure the counselors are there listening. Um, again, find some time to stretch and make sure you guys go to the bathroom every 45 minutes and not every five minutes. Uh, by 1025, you should be going into your second activity um, with a technique of the day and everything else remains the same. By 1045, you should be going into your snack break. All right. And because it's only half day, we're only going to have a, a snack break, no lunch break. Lunch break is for the full day. So coaches and counselors, um, we have to make sure this is this is where 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 if we had a moment where things can happen or or incidents can happen, it's during this snack break. All right. So make sure that you guys are also on your snack, that you guys have your snack. Um, but make sure you keep your eyes on the campers. If you leave your 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 snack in the in the building, send the counselors. Uh, we want the coaches on the field. All right. And always keep your body shape towards the group. Right. So if you're sitting down, don't put your back towards the kids. Face them. Um, make sure you can see as much as of, of the field. Um, sometimes sometimes Coach Carl, who's on the opposite side, he sees things on our side just because he's watching the whole field and he's not he's not only watching a section of the field. All right. So keep an eye on the field. Maybe we miss something on the other side and you can yell at us. You can tell us, hey, that kid's going up the hill. Um, it happens. So alert during this moment. All right. Don't leave the kids unattended and um, and make sure that every three minutes you remind them, hey, throw away your trash. Who who ate here? Who's who ate who ate McDonald's today and they left their McDonald's bag or whatnot? Hopefully it's a little bit healthier. Um and if you need something from the garage, try to send the counselors as much as possible. We need the adult coaches on the field and the counselors moving. Um, so 1045 to 11, 11 a.m. is the um, is the snack break at 11, 11. We start our official scrimmage. This is where you this is this is our official World Cup scrimmage because we're in World Cup theme. Um, you give them bibs. You let them choose a official country who's in the World Cup. Um um, by 1125, uh, well, usually I start with small goals and then I go to bigger goals, but, uh, what worked is just going straight to big goals. So from 1111, let's start going to big goals. Make sure the counselors are there. They're helping you coach. If you need an extra player, let the counselors play with restrictions. They cannot score. They have three touches and they cannot lift the ball in the air to avoid them hitting anyone. Help monitor the game, cheer, encourage, jump in and play, be a referee, um, just make sure you understand those are the last moments of camp for that day. So make it fun. Um, and um, and hopefully we're not running back and forth from the bathroom and we've stretched throughout the day. And that should lead us to 12 uh, p.m., which is when half day camp ends. And then this week, that's the end of camp overall. So uh, when we blow the whistle for the half day to finish, it's going to be around 11.55. Make sure you do not send the kids running by themselves. Make sure you guys go together as a pack towards the registration tent. Well, we'll have numbers one, two, three, four. So just go sit. If you're you if you were on field four, just sit your group on field four so that when pickup comes, um, we can call out the player and we can direct ourselves to that group. All right. Uh during this moment, coaches, counselors, get all campers and group to collect all equipment and soccer balls, uh, get them to pick up the garbage and organize their equipment. Uh, coaches, counselors, walk your group as a unit to their sign out areas and do not let your group just walk off alone. Uh, we have to be sitting at sign out by 12 p.m. All right, because we want to be at, we want to have all the campers out by 12 15. 
and we're doing drive through uh, drop off and drive through pickup. So they don't have to get out of their cars. Uh, they can just drive up, give us the name, call their player, escort them to their car, and they're on their way. All right. Um, and during this time, the full day campers would go and eat lunch, but we don't have any full day campers. All right. Um, uh, leave you guys with a little quote. Our job as coaches is to provide a fun learning environment for every player where they feel safe and confident to be themselves and express themselves through soccer. Camp is where I learned uh, about me facing fears, trying new things, pushing my boundaries and accepting myself. So make sure you guys understand that you guys are offering an experience to the kids um, and make sure you guys uh, are 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 up for it. Yes. Uh, make sure you guys uh, go into character, go into uh, camp coach. Um, but that is basically it of everything that we're going to be doing um, uh, for half day camp starting on Monday. Uh, is there anything or any questions that you guys may have uh, after this presentation or before? No, it was pretty clear cut. I got it. All righty. Um, and Juliana, you're good? Yes, Gabe. Just let them know if the kids need to sign out yeah. or just sign in. Sign out, they, yes. Yeah, they need, yeah. So um, they are going to... Give me one second, please. I'm sharing a screen. Here it is. Uh, we're not going to go through this presentation, um, but I do want to jump into some slides. Just remember the days, uh, day one, day two, day three, 8 to 12, 15. That's the expected hours to be there. Um, I'm going to need, uh, no, I'm going to need your information in terms of licenses. Um, for Ely as well. And Juliana, anything that you would like me to put in your bio, uh, I would like for you to send it to me on the chat or wherever, just like I have it. Look, I have a Gabe Renteria, Camp Director, United States Soccer Federation C license, working on my B. And Shay has, Shay has her grassroots and so forth, just because I send this to the parents. So if you guys can please give me that uh, via our chat, that would be great. Um, and so the parents can know who, who's looking after their kids. Registration is only through play metrics. Um, uh, so here it is, Juliana. Look, uh, so when parents are dropping off, we're going to try to do uh, drop off only. All right. And, um, and that's going to be really hard on Monday, but it's, it's a culture that we're building. So everyone who knows our camp, We'll we'll know we'll know to just drop them off and 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 let them in and they go to work or whatnot. Some parents want to stay and watch them a little bit. They can, but they cannot jump onto the field. Um, um, but it's basically just drop off. So the parents will drop off their players with you in front of field two. Uh, and what works best is for you to ask them to put their camper's name on their on their on their dashboard, just like if it, they were picking them up from elementary school where the parents have the kid's name on the dashboard. Um, the parents, are, most of them already have one from their school. So it's easy for us to see the name. Uh, for example, Josh Q. And then we go and we get that player. And then one of the counselors escorts him to the car. Uh, no kid goes to the car without an escort of our counselors or coaches. All right. So um, that is huge. That is part of the safety protocol. Um, and, and those parents who get off, we want to tell them, Hey, tomorrow you don't have to get off. You can just drop them off via uh, a drop off. We'll open the door for them. They'll get off. We'll say hello. And then they'll be on their way. Um, so we do have to have a, 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 the parent physically sign them in, uh, and physically sign them out. So we need a clipboard with all the, 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 the campers names that registered, um, on Sunday night, we usually print it out. And we have a uh, we have a uh, a section that has uh, uh, player sign in, player sign out. So it's their name, uh, first last name, their parent email, their parent contact, sign in, sign out. And when the kid arrives, the parent signs them in. When the player leaves, they sign him out. Um, and we've never had any incidents where a player has been uh, where we've had miscommunication, and we don't know because we have that. Um, it cannot be electronic because then the parents don't physically sign their players out. 
Um, and we've had one situation. We've had one situation where a, one of the parents picked up the kid, but did not communicate clearly to the other parent. And then the other parent came to pick up the same kid. And we were like, look, they were signed out by this person. Um, and and she, she almost went into panic mode. But we told her she was signed out by this person at this time. Um, and, and, and it happened to be it happened to be one of their family members. So we have to make sure that they sign out uh, when they okay, enter the indeed. camp. Thank you. Yes. Uh, everything else uh, we've gone over. Um, I don't know if we're going to use that many fields, um, but make sure. Look, so just try to remind them that they don't have to get out the car. Most parents will listen. Some parents just want to make sure their kid walks onto the field. Um, in case in case of inclement weather, um, we'll go into the our soccer building, uh, use the garage, any space to get away from in, any inclement weather, which we're not predicting, um, until it passes. Once it passes, we go back outside. If we know that it's a system that's going to take stay around for a while, then we call the parents and tell them, look, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do anything, and it's best for you to pick up your kid. Um, but we don't see that happen. If you guys happen to have any camp or disrespect you guys, um, uh, make sure that you guys uh, give them a first verbal warning, uh, second verbal warning, and then by the third time, their parent is picking them up. So in camp's history, since eight years ago, we've only had two players expelled from camp, and one of them was last summer. You know, it's just and, and it was just blatant, just just not being not being respectful, just just going off and honestly just falling off. All right. So with that being said, I think we covered everything about camp. Uh Juliana, I don't I, I don't know if you're going if you guys are creating a QR code. What I predict is parents arriving and saying, I haven't registered. And then you taking up most of your time to show them how to register. If we have a step-by-step -step registration sheet that we can say here, look, here's the registration steps. Now they can do that and you can move on to the next one or a QR code. So um, that's just food for thought in case we can think of a solution for that. Yeah, Corina told me that she won to handle that with Maka. Perfect. No problem. Because I don't know what to do yet. Okay. For the Not next one, I will do it. It's Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> Not a problem. All right. So is there any more questions or are we uh, okay with this? All right. We're good. Um, wait. Hold on. Can I get the... Um, is it possible to get that... Um... That PowerPoint that you were showing us of everything that we're going to be doing? Yeah, I can send both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that. Do you need my, my email for it? Um, Yeah, just put it in the chat, please. That way I don't go searching for it. All right, cool. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and Juliana, what is what is your uh, email? I put it in the, the chat as well. Okay. okay. And I'll I send think it to you guys. Easier. It. Okay, perfect. And I'll send it to you guys right now. So that you guys can have it and just review it or or whatever you guys need. All right. All right, guys, is there anything else? Um, no, I'll just send all the information that you need. You said you need my um like last name. My yeah, first, yeah, and first you... last name. Basically, basically, um uh your just like a a, a um uh a bio but like a yeah you know you know anything that you would like the parents to know because parents are already asking me who's going to be the coach for our group and i just basically tell them i usually take the youngest coach ely takes the what we would call the the next group the middle group um yeah. and then shay takes the takes the ones who are in between the middle and big group and no you'll be taking the the oldest kids perfect all right. So anything you would like the parents to know, you can forward it to me. Any licenses or accreditation that you may have, that would be great. And so the parents can feel better. No problem. I'll get on that ASAP. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. You guys should receive those two PowerPoints in the next uh, minutes. Okay.
cool, no problem, Gabe. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks. See you guys tonight. All right, yeah. later. Bye-bye.